So why is it that one unique hospitality and glamping business can succeed amazingly well, while another one just simply fails, particularly during the setup process? What's the reasons for this? And what can we do to learn from it? I explore two key factors, fear and mindset. So the question is, are these holding you back? Welcome to episode 21. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. noisy hotel room in Denver where I'm here about to speak at the Glamping Summit and it's happening here in Denver this year in Colorado. I can see the mountains in the distance out of the window and it's beautiful. So they are snow topped at the moment, really lovely to look at. I love a bit of snow, don't get it very often where I live because I'm on sea level and this city is 5,000 meters above sea level. So it's actually, it's quite different from, from what I'm used to. And occasionally, certainly coming up the stairs, I can feel quite breathless. It's something, if you're not used to this kind of thin atmosphere, then you definitely feel it. But I'm here because I've been asked to speak at the event and I'm speaking at both days and I've been working really hard on my speech and everything that's attached to it for a long, long time. I know that it sounds a bit strange to be working on it that long, probably almost a year now, but it's because it's involved with asking a lot of people two key questions. Now, a lot of people means a lot of people in the glamping industry, people who have actually already started up their businesses and have been running them for quite a long time. So we have so much to learn from people like this. They've, they already know what works, they know what doesn't work, they know where they failed, where they succeeded. If they had to do it again, then what they should do next time round to get where they are quicker and to avoid those hurdles. So, of course, these are the two questions that I decided to ask them. And is a reason for why I'm talking about what I'm talking about today. The two questions I've been asking them for over a year have been, what do you wish you'd known before you set up your glamping business? And the other question is, if you had to do it all over again and start from scratch, what would you do first to get the most impact fast? Two fabulous questions that I had the most amazing input for and lots of people gave us their insight and incredibly valuable insight. And that's one of the reasons for why I'm doing this episode now. But another reason is I had a question from a member of my own courses, my own programs about fear and mindset. She is currently in a situation where she knows what she needs to do and how she needs to get there, but fear and mindset is holding her back. And she really wanted to talk about this or learn a bit more about how to manage that because it can actually really hold people back. And this really dovetails into something that one of the existing glamping business owners talked about in their response to my questions. So this was Cameron Darcy from Sierra Escapes and he explained in his response that since starting up his business, lots of people have asked him questions about how he did it, what he recommended, what he would do with his tents and how they should be set up and the layout of the structure and so many other questions. 
But he said those same people are still asking him questions, even though now he started his business, it's been running for ages, and they're even expanding. They're expanding their offering, they're expanding the number of tents they've got. And so he was quite intrigued about why he's managed to go forward and forge ahead with his plans. And yet some people are still asking him questions and are still stuck in the research stage. Now the research stage is incredibly important. Everyone needs to do research, they need to write the business plans, they need to really look at what they're doing. But there is a point when you could actually be getting yourself stuck in that stage and something can be holding you back from moving forward. And what is that? Is this the fear of success? Is it a lack of confidence? Is it imposter syndrome? Are you feeling overwhelmed and not knowing where to start? What is it that holds you back where other people may have forged ahead and gone further? So to look at fear and reasons that fear are maybe having an impact on your situation, you kind of got to understand what is fear and why is it so important? And clearly we all need fear. We need fear in our life. It's actually something that keeps us very, very safe. If we didn't have fear, we might get run over when we cross the road or we might not pay attention to our health and visit the doctor if there's something wrong or pay attention to what we're eating or exercise well. It's fear of the implications and the consequences of not doing those things properly that actually keeps us safe and it makes us take action that is obviously going to be better than if we didn't. So if we didn't cross the road whilst looking, then we're going to end up in a whole heap of trouble. But fear of traffic and fast moving traffic and the implications of coming into contact with that is going to keep us safe. So what can we do when kind of fear gets out of hand and if it has an impact on our own confidence and if we let things like imposter syndrome and feeling overwhelmed not knowing where to start, if we let that hold us back, if we let that have more of a direct impact on what we're hoping to get out of what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. So the argument is that we should embrace our fear. We should see our fear as something there to protect us and we should learn to dance with it, to understand that it's there for our own good, for our own benefit, but to know when it's gone so far that it's stopping us from moving ahead. So taking note and understanding how you are reacting to that fear and that lack of confidence is really the first step in all of that. So taking note of it and asking yourself what it's trying to tell you is important, understanding if that actually has any weight behind it, if you should be paying attention to it, or if it's just making you procrastinate is a really good piece of analysis you can do on your own thoughts and your own thinking. And I'm a real fan of journaling. I'm a real fan of writing it down and kind of going through that process of analysis. And it's a really good way of you kind of understanding, does this apply to you? Is this something that is holding you back for the wrong reasons? Or is it actually trying to protect you for the right reasons? It's a really good exercise to go through, particularly if you are asking yourself why you're not making progress and why you think you're not moving ahead. So ask yourself this, is it really trying to keep you safe? Is it really trying to teach you something? Or is it trying to wake you up to something? If it's not, then you need to know when you should be ignoring it. And I'm particularly talking to those perfectionists out there. Now, I am a recovering perfectionist. I have in the past let my desire to have something to be perfect hold me back. And it's not something that is a good thing because it just means you don't move forward at all. You do not move forward and that's no good. The best thing you can do is to really think about the fact that perfection leads to procrastination and it's better to take imperfect action than no action at all. I am definitely a fan of imperfect action. I do it all the time. 
I'm not afraid of my mistakes. I'm not afraid now of not looking perfect or being perfect or offering things that are perfect without errors, without mistakes. I can always go back afterwards and tweak it and change it and perfect it later. But if I don't take that imperfect action, then I just stagnate in what I'm trying to do and what I, I'm trying to achieve and I don't move forward. And I would definitely urge you, if you think you are a perfectionist, then make sure that you're telling yourself to take imperfect action because it's so much better than no action. And you can always go back and you can tweak it and improve it later and work on it later, particularly in a service industry where you can take the comments of your customers, you can take the comments of people who are giving you feedback and use that to tailor and tweak what you're doing and what you're offering it doesn't have to be perfect at the first step. It's better to be imperfect and to have done it than to not move forward. And that's exactly what Cameron was telling us when he was uh, explaining the story about how so many people are still asking him questions when he's taken his action and he's moved forward with his business. And now because he's taking that action, he's moving forward, is actually at that position now when he's expanding and yet people before still asking him those questions, they haven't even taken the first step. And so this is so important to know if that desire to be perfect is holding you back. But also if it's about an inability to take your business decisions or decision making, or you keep getting wrapped up in a tangle about what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and you're looking into it in a lot of depth and a lot of detail, the biggest recommendation I can make to anyone in that position is to work through it in your business planning and particularly in your financials. These are so good as a decision-making tool, a decision-making aid, because it allows you to really think through the process of what you want to do, what you want to offer, how much is it gonna cost, how much could you get back for it as revenue, and what your potential profit can be and so on. I'm not gonna go into the details of business planning. I go through that in a huge amount of detail in my courses, but business planning and particularly around the financial spreadsheets, your setup costs and your cash flows, it allows you to understand those really important answers to questions such as, am I gonna get enough money back from this business idea to pay for my salary and to keep my family with the income that they need to have a good quality of life. And it allows you to understand if you make a decision about taking that option, how much of an impact will that have on the bottom line? How much of an impact will have on your business values that you've worked through and you've decided that's what you, you are important to you and that's what you're going to work on? And it also allows you to get firm on your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you setting up your business? Why are you going forward and taking action in the way that you are? And what impact are your decisions having on your why? So for example, my why is all based on the experiences that I had with my family business, a small family business in Somerset. It was a beautiful gentleman's residence in Somerset and they're called a gentleman's residence you can find them in Google if you look them up in the UK they're beautiful they're like a stately home but they're obviously much smaller stately homes are massive but they're a large very old Georgian building it's got beautiful rooms it's a just a gorgeous place for people to come and stay and we were running a boutique hospitality business for a decade. It was five star, something I'm incredibly proud of that my family were able to achieve that five star and maintain it for the 10 years that it was running as a business. And the thing that I was, that is most memorable for me is because it was a small business, because it was a family run business, there were times of those challenges, when those challenges came and it had a real impact on my family. And I saw that from you know, the, the very depth of that impact, those uh, issues that would be worrying or scary or fearful or things that would lead to uh, concerns or whatever would happen. 
it, it was something that I saw, the real emotional impact of those things. And this is why it became my firm desire to want to support and help other small to medium-sized businesses who maybe don't have anywhere else to go, who don't have anyone else that they can trust that can have the answers to their questions. And so it became very important to me because of my own experiences to have this firm value of making sure that I continue to support small and medium-sized businesses. That was absolutely the why I was in business myself and it all comes from my own experiences in a family business in the hospitality industry uh, and it's something that I won't ever lose because to me that's what makes it so important for me to do what I'm doing. That's why I stay up really late and that's why I work incredibly hard and that's why I do so many things that others may not do because that why is so important to me and it's my key and core value. So knowing what your why is and what your values are, are so super important. Now some of these could be, your why could be around the environment and protecting the environment and giving people a place to go to learn more about their environment and nature and nurture and uh, the flora and fauna around your area and to give people that ability to fall in love and can reconnect with nature because you know that if people are in love with nature then they'll do all they can to protect it and that might be your value that might be your why or you may recognize as someone who has a family of their own how important it is to provide a place for families to escape the hustle and bustle of their daily life and to reconnect with each other and to have a place to rest and recuperate from the busy world and maybe to go off grid and rewild themselves and get back in touch with nature. These could all be your whys, your own why. But if you get firm on what your why is, that will really help you through that whole process about why you're doing what you're doing, why it's so important to continue to do what you're doing and why when you need to reframe your thinking around your fear and your imposter syndrome and your lack of confidence, why that's so important. It's so important for you to reframe that because what you will do will help other people. It's not just about helping you set up your business and bring an income for, it, for yourself. This is about you helping others. And if you really pull that into your frame of thinking and change your perspective, then I think you will, it will help you have more confidence to go forward with what you want to achieve. As humans, it's quite interesting. We, we all, if anything happens, like we need to take self care about ourselves. We need to give ourselves some self love. We need to spend more time on ourselves. Maybe we need to go and have a massage. Maybe we need to take time out and have a day off or go to a hotel and have some rest. Go to the beach and enjoy a day in the sun. It, it, I don't know about you, but I certainly find it really hard to give myself that kind of pleasure to say, yes, take time off. Take time off and stop doing what you're doing and working so hard because you deserve to actually have that thing. So... When we are reframing what we're doing and saying, actually, you know, it's not just good for you to take time off. It's good for your family to take that time off because it means then you'll be more present for your, fam for your family. You'll be in a much better frame of mind for your family. So actually, you may be taking that time out for yourself, but the impact will be so much wider. It will impact your family. They'll be happier. You'll be able to look after them in a better way. And so really, rather than thinking about it as self-care for us, we need to think about it as self-care for us because then it will impact our family in a better way. And it's the same with this whole thing about your why with your business. If you get really firm on your why for your business, it will be less about you and what you want to achieve out of your business. And it's more about what you're doing to get an impact on your why and why you're doing it in the first place. 
and the impact and the, the positive impact that will have on the people you are trying to help. So really reframing your thinking helps to deal with imposter syndrome. It helps to deal with your mindset about why you're doing what you're doing. It gives you more confidence to move forward and move ahead. It gives you that ability to go, you know, I feel, I'm feel i feeling this fear, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's important because I want to do this for that purpose, that, that why, that core reason. And I'm doing that because it's so important for that thing, not just necessarily yourself. And also it's really good to think about when you do get those feelings of imposter syndrome and why am I doing this? I don't deserve this. Everyone's gonna look at me and say, who do they think they are doing this or setting up that business or running that event or offering those holidays, whatever it might be. Knowing that when you're experiencing that imposter syndrome, you need to tell yourself that's because you've just stepped up a level. You've just arrived. You've just moved into a place where so many other people don't move into. It's confidence boosting. It's mindset boosting. You have stepped up a level. You are leveling up your business and your approach to life and what you're trying to achieve for yourself and other people. So I suppose really what's happened is I've come here to the Glamping Summit and I'm, I'm looking through my notes for my speeches and I just really wanted to share this insight that I've had because of the feedback that I've got from other businesses and because of the feedback of everything that I've done in my own life that I know that it's so important that when you're thinking of setting up a business, particularly in hospitality, when there's quite a few other people out there wanting to do the same and you could feel that there's quite a bit of competition, or that maybe you're doing this when you've got no experience of doing anything like this in the past because you're moving careers, you're changing your focus on what you want out of life and this seems to have the answers for you, it's really important to lean into your fear, to know that it's there, but to not let it stop you from what you're trying to achieve, to dance with it, to know it's there to protect you, but also to know that it could hold you back if you let it, and to reframe it, because reframing it helps to get rid of all of those feelings of imposter syndrome, and it helps with your mindset, and it will help to make you feel stronger Because actually, you know what? You're right where you're supposed to be. You're doing the right thing. Because if you're feeling that fear, then you're really up-leveling where you are in your life and your business. And I really hope this helps if at this moment you've been struggling with all of these things. And I hope that it helps you move forward and to take the action you need to take to get what you want out of your life and out of your business and enjoy it, enjoy the ride. This is why we're all here, isn't it? This is why we do what we do. It's so important every now and again to smell the flowers, listen to the birds and enjoy the ride. See you soon. In my time in this industry, I have been lucky enough to work with thousands of unique hospitality and glamping businesses. And during that time, I have asked each of them the following questions. What do they wish they'd known at the beginning of their journey? And if they had to do it all again from scratch, what's the thing they'd do first to have the most impact fast? Now you can get your hands on an ebook with a collection of some of those valuable insights from businesses around the world. To get your copy, go to inspiredcourses.com forward slash wish. It's full of heaps of advice and nuggets of gold from people already out there doing amazing things. So download your copy today and let's see where it's going to take you tomorrow.